Hey programmers, Alvin here. Welcome back to a new lesson. And what I want to do here is show you how to implement some snake movement. So you're probably thinking, why are we covering this seemingly random thing in our section on queues? And the reason is we can actually implement this pretty elegantly using a queue. Now there are plenty of queue applications that can utilize the data structure in a clever way, but unfortunately most of them require knowledge of other concepts like graphs, which we'll cover later on in the course. Other examples that just use a regular queue data structure are pretty uninspiring, stuff like simulating a grocery checkout line and other boring stuff like that. So I think this snake project will be pretty fun to work through. So that means our learning objective for today is to implement the slithering movement for a snake in the classic sense of the game. So if you're unfamiliar with the game Snake, what you want to do is just hop into your browser and just search for a Snake game. There are probably many of things that you can play online. So here's some classic Snake game running, and really the objective is to collect some food. And if I collect the food, and I'm not horrible at this game, oh no, getting there, and I'm not horrible at this game, uh, we can actually lengthen our Snake. But in particular, what I just want to focus on in this lesson is how to implement the movement of this snake. So you'll notice that it really follows a very particular pattern. Right now I'm controlling like the head of the snake, and you can kind of see like the path that the snake travels uh, through this space. And we can actually accomplish this with a cue, which is pretty darn cool if I say so myself. So let's come up with a strategy that we can use to attack this one. It's pretty evident that the snake is moving through a two-dimensional space, and to represent that, we can just use a 2D array. So that's not anything fancy, really. That being said, how can we represent the snake on this grid in a way where you can really mimic that slither-like movement? So let's just say we place a snake on the board. In this diagram, what I have in blue is just the body of the snake, and then in orange, I have the head of the snake. The head is actually the unit of the board that you would control with your arrow keys. What we can do is store all of these positions that the snake is occupying in some queue, right? So a few patterns to notice here, we're gonna use a queue, which means that things will leave uh, through the front and also enter through the back. And in this scenario, the back of our queue would technically represent like the head of the snake. And we'll see why that is in a little bit. Now let's say that my snake was going to move. Let's say I hit the up arrow key, right? So if my snake was moving upward, what I should do is take this new position of three comma four and add it to the back of my queue, and at the same time, take the front of my queue and remove it, right? So basically, in the context of how I visualize the board, this orange square should move upward over here, and then this blue square, which is like the tail of the snake, should actually turn white, right? It should disappear because it's technically not part of the snake, right? So in the next frame, we actually should have a queue that looks like this. And we can just continue this pattern throughout. So let's say my snake was moving to the right. What that means is I'm going to uh, NQ a new item of three, five, and also drop this four, two, right? So now four, three is at the front because it's about to be dropped off in the next frame and three, five is at the back of my queue, right? And I think that's all there is to it. Just with this core queue logic, we can really mimic the slithering movement of the snake. Awesome, so before we jump into the code for this one, I think we should kind of lay out a more code-oriented plan in some pseudocode. So I think we're definitely going to use a snake class. And just for now, I think that might be the only class we need, but along with that, what properties are we gonna need inside of a snake? So we definitely need the queue. We need the queue for the snake's body. So we're going to use a queue to store the positions that make up the snake's body. And under the hood, that could just be as simple as an array, right? And we'll use methods to NQ and DQ for that. Now, along with that, I think we'll need a method to draw the board. So for this one, we'll say the draw method should draw the grid, let's say with the snake's body on it. So that's pretty straightforward. And what else will we need? We'll probably also need some methods for movement, right? So it'd be nice if we had like a move method and for that, what it should do is maybe take in a direction. And with that direction, the move method should actually manipulate the queue. And obviously you want it to manipulate the queue in a way where it's basically as if the snake has moved. So that should just be a matter of enqueuing and dequeuing. All right, let's start to do this together and I'll do it step by step. So I'll define my snake class. In terms of the constructor, uh, we'll just go ahead and say that we'll just populate the snakes body so i'll say this dot and i'll initialize it with some information so just to make sure i can at least throw up uh, some initial snake on the board i'm going to put a few different positions in to represent a single position of our snake we're going to need uh, some inner subarrays right so i'll lay down some stuff here i'll say for one 
And to start, why don't we just make our snake uh, just take up, let's say, four units of space. So a few things to notice here, when it comes to representing positions of our grid, we're just gonna use some pairs that represent the row and column position. So now that I have the snake body out of the way at least, let's start to just draw things. So I wanna draw a grid, and you can make your snake board really whatever size you want. I just really wanna focus in on the nice Q action that we'll do in a little bit. So let's say for my draw method, let's say that I'm dealing with, I don't know, like a 10 by 10 uh, grid right now. To make the printing process easier, let me actually just generate this like 2D array that we're gonna print out. So I'll say const, we'll say our grid is some array. Then I'll iterate. So let's say for let i equals zero and up to 10. So that should give me 10 iterations. So this would be like maybe the height of my grid. What I'll do is generate some row. Right, so I'll initialize that row. And then I wanna make sure that this row also has a length of 10, right? So I'll use some inner loop, say let j equals zero. And we'll say j less than 10, and of course j plus plus. And for now, I think I'll just say row.push, and I'll just push in the space character. So if it's a space, that means that that position is unoccupied, right? There's no snake at that position. So this for loop does the job of populating a single row with just spaces. And after a row is complete and it has all of its spaces, I want to push that row into my grid. So I'll say grid.push row. Then after I'm done doing that for all of my rows, then just for now, I'll console.log my grid. So I should see that 10 by 10 grid printed out. Let me test this code to do that. I can just create an instance of this class. So I can say maybe game equals snake. I should be saying new snake here in JavaScript. Then I'll say game dot draw. So I should see that 10 by 10 uh, 2D array. Cool, so that looks pretty good. Kind of renders in a, in a funny way. Now let's start to fix it. So I have my 10 by 10. Let's just start formatting it kind of nicely. So I think the nice way to do this is possibly just iterate through every row of the grid. So I can say grid dot for each. So I'm just iterating through every row of that 2D array. And for each row, I'll just console.log it. And if I just console.log, let's say row dot join on like a pipe symbol, that will kind of show me the different grid lines, at least the vertical uh, grid lines here. Cool, and I think I could drop line 28 now. So let's see what we get. Should see some vertical lines. Nice, and that is a decent way that we can visualize our grid uh, for now. But now let's work on populating our snake within this visualization, right? So that's pretty straightforward. I have to think about this as if I'm just in like a single frame of gameplay. And when it comes to actually playing the full game, you would just keep rerunning this like frame logic, right? So if I actually wanted to throw the snake on the screen, I can just make sure that this grid, this 2D array that I created, uh, contains some different symbols at these positions, right? So nothing too fancy here. I can just say this dot snake body. I'm gonna iterate through every position of the snake's body. So I'll say snake body dot for each, we'll say position. For each position, that actually gives me a row and column. So I'll pluck that out. So I can say grab the row and column out of that position. And then it should just be a matter of assigning that position uh, for your grid. So I can say grid at row column. And let's say I'm using some symbol for my snake. Let's say I use, I don't know, a capital O to represent some snake positions. Let's see how that looks now. So I'll give that a shot. Nice, and there I see my little snake of four units uh, drawn on my screen. Cool, so I dig it so far. Let me move my terminal over just so we have some room to gallop over here. Let's work on some, some other methods. Obviously the one we're interested in the most is probably the move method, right? So take in a direction and then manipulate the queue in a particular way. And so what I'll say here is, let me create this move method. And when I say direction, I just mean something like up, down, left, and right. So I'll have it take in some string. I'll call it my direction. Let's think about the possible directions that we can be entered, right? So there are four cardinal directions over here, and I'll just call them my 
we'll say like delta, because I know that depending on the direction that the user calls move with, that means I need to change their position in a different way, right? So I'll have like an object here. I think this is a pretty clean way to implement this where I have all possible directions. So I know I have up and with this object, I want its values to represent the change I need to make to the row and column, right? In other words, if I'm moving up in terms of my 2D array, then that means that you need to subtract one from the row value and then do nothing uh, to the column value. In the same way for the down position, that means you want to add one uh, to the row value and do nothing to the column. And it flows similarly for all of these different changes, right? So don't get tripped up by like the arithmetic here. You have to remember that when we deal with a 2D array, the origin or the position zero, zero is technically the top left. In other words, you'll notice here that when I say up, I do minus one. So if I go to my drawing, that's because if you were at some position like four, four to go upward, you subtract your row value by one, right? So my row decreases from four to three uh, if I'm going upward. Cool, so let's start to try to utilize uh, these different changes. So what I'll do is I need to grab the snake's current head and so for us, we'll assume that the snake's head is maybe the last element of this array. So this will just refer to the last element uh, of this array. And I'll save that as the current head. Now that I have that current head, I'll just go ahead and break it down into its row and column values. Cool, so this code is starting to take shape. Let me also grab some things out of the delta object in terms of how I want to change the row and column of my current position. So what I can say is I'll key into this object, so into the delta object using my direction. And depending on that direction, that should give me one of these subarrays. Let me also maybe destructure the elements of that subarray. So the first would be the change in the row, and the second would be the change in the column, right? So imagine that my direction is, let's say, down right now. That means when I write delta of down, I would get back this subarray. And so I'm destructuring it, so change row is one and change call is zero. Then things are really straightforward because I can just say, hey, my new head is just a subarray uh, containing your current row plus your change in row. And then the second element is the current column plus the change in that column. All right, so now that I have the new head, what do I want to do with it? Well, just like we spoke about, that new position should just be added to your queue, right? So I'm gonna add it to the back of my queue. So I can say this.snakebody.push. I'm going to push in this new head. And what I should also do is remove the front of my queue, right? So if the head moves into some new position, if you wanna keep your snake uh, the same length, you're gonna to have to also drop the tail, right? So in the context of my queue, that means I'm dequeuing something. In JavaScript, I can say this.snakebody.shift. Just to clarify things, push means I'm adding to the end of my array. Shift means I'm removing the front of my array. So there was a lot of logic inside of this move method. I think we should test it, right? So there are a few things I'll do. Uh, we know that when we start the game, our head is technically like this position over here. Let's say that afterwards, I'll just console.log some dashes really quick. Afterwards, what I'll do is call uh, game.move. So then I'll move upward. You know, if you're actually building an application, maybe you have this as some constant, but I'll just keep it as a plain old string right now. After we move upward, we'll go ahead and draw again. So I wonder what that, what that looks like. Cool, so in our initial frame of gameplay, we have this snake. And if this position moves upward, it goes up over here. And then this position sort of disappears from our snake. So that looks, that looks pretty good. Let's test it one more time. So now I'll say move to the right. And that should obviously create a little bit of an S shape, right? So it starts here, goes up, goes to the right. Yeah, this code looks, looks pretty good. So that's really all there is to using the queue to track our snake's movement in a slither-like motion. Let's try to make this a little bit prettier in terms of animating our terminal by maybe clearing it and redrawing it every time. And along with that, we'll definitely want to take in some user input uh, to dictate which direction we're moving toward. So what I'll do is I'll create the main function, which would be like our main game loop. So I'll say play. 
So in terms of our gameplay, we definitely want to take in some user input. So this won't be too related to like data structures and algorithms right now, but I do think it's some fun JavaScript node stuff. So we just need some basic boilerplate here to take in some user input. So one way you can do that is to use this code and breaking it down, we're using standard input, which right now would refer to our terminal, right? We can type things in our terminal. And what we we'll wanna do is set raw mode to true, right? That means that we're allowed to hit any keys that we want on our keyboard and our node process is going to read them. What we wanna do is resume taking a standard input and also set our encoding to UTFA. That way we can really translate like what keys we're hitting, right? Basically, if the user hits up or maybe like W, then we'll want to send the snake upward, right? And so at this point, what I want to do is read that standard input and use like an event handler. So on some data, this is very generic um, node standard input code. Upon getting some data, I want to check what that key press is. I'll fire this callback. So this will be pretty straightforward. What I'll do is I'll check, hey, if my key press is maybe a W, then I'll send my snake upward. So then I'll say snake dot or rather this dot move, this dot move up. And it'll be similar for all of our other directions. I'll use WASD here. One thing we'll also wanna do just to make the life of the user uh, kind of easier is to make sure that it can still quit this process. Technically right now, this code is intercepting all user input through the keyboard. And that even means if they try to like manually kill uh, the process. So we'll want to intercept also this character, which is technically like control C. Cool, so after they press one of these characters, we'll go ahead and we'll draw. We'll do this dot draw. We'll draw the game. And before I forget, I wanna make sure that we can kind of have some animations here. So whenever we draw something, right, whenever we console.log, we should probably also clear the screen. So we could just do console.clear. Cool. So really this is the only new code that we've written, just making it so that whenever we press a direction key, we call the correct uh, move, and then we also draw things. So to get this ball rolling, let's do our snake. So we'll say, again, once again, my game is going to be new snake. Then along with that, I can say game.play. So fingers crossed, let's give it a go. So I'll run my snake movement project. I'll hit some arrow keys. Nice, and here we have our snake movement. Right now I'm clicking all of my directions and they all seem to be working. So there we have it, we utilized a queue to implement some snake movement. So as an exercise for you, if you'd like, you can actually build this into a full snake game. A few things you'll want to do, definitely make sure that you can throw food up on the screen to lengthen of the snake, as well as possibly implementing some collision detection. So in like the core game of snake, usually if you run into like any of the borders, then you would lose the game. Right now, if we did that, we'd probably just like break our program. All right, this is kind of not supposed to happen, definitely breaking. <laughs> and along with that, whenever the snake runs into itself, it would also end the game. But I'll leave that to you because that really doesn't require any extra Q knowledge.